Hi, this is Yikes, trying to reload a Minox cassette. This is going to take some practice, I'll tell you. And uh, so I'm going to have to develop a t technique. So the idea would be as you split your film in the previous video, you'd have it in a light tight container, like one of these black uh, film holding containers. And here's the pieces of the cassette itself. We have a uh, supply side. And we have a take-up side. The take-up side has a uh, spool in it that uh, is removable. We're going to tape our film to that. It can only go back in one way, which is good, because it needs to go in a certain way so it will interface with the camera. So uh, now let's say we're in the dark. We're going to take this, take our roll of film, and we're going to tightly wind it because it has to fit in that uh, supply side. There are little indents here with a tab, so if you uh, know where those are, you press in a little and the cassette will pop open. You have to be careful because you don't want to break your cassette because cassettes are hard to find, or you may have to purchase some new film to get a cassette, or some used film, but what we're doing now is we're winding it up tightly into a little roll that it will fit in there. And again, this is all, we're still in the dark. Now. We're going to put this in, close that. Now, once we close that in, we close our little film canister up so we don't expose our film, we can then go into the light. Ta -da. Now we're in the light. Okay, that's going to be much easier to deal with. This This is really finicky. I found that if you cut the scotch tape uh, directly in half, that makes it about the same width but it's kind of a, a finicky thing. You have to be careful that the tape isn't too long. If the tape is too long, it's going to cause a problem because the gate there for the film to be taken up in is very narrow, and uh, the tape adds some width to it. So you can see there, I goofed that one up. I'm going to try another one. And I've decided cut that directly in half. We'll see if we get it this time. There we go. Okay, you can't even see it. It's there though. And now I'm going to take that and uh, you got to remember to put it on the correct side. You don't want too much on the film because again it's going to interfere with that gate. And look here now. I'm putting it on upside down. The hollow end has to be up because it's got to interface with the gears and the camera. So I'm going to realize that in a second and say, oh, wait, 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 no, that's backwards, that's backwards, Mike. There we go. See, doesn't fit, Michael. I told you that. Okay, we try again. So you can see I'm putting most of the tape on the uh, take-up spool, not on the film, because it's going to add all that extra width. There. Now, look, there we go. It fits now. Now this, to me, is, is the hardest part. I can't imagine doing this part in the dark. But I'm sure people have learned. Maybe I will learn. But the, the, the gate that the film goes through is so narrow. It's got to be narrow because it doesn't want to have light. It has to fit snugly. So uh, I keep fooling around with this and fooling around with it. And I will eventually get it. But I definitely have to practice this quite a bit before I'm going to be able to uh, do this, uh, but at least doing it this way, this step can be done, and I would do subdued lighting. I would not have very bright light. I've got an overhead fluorescent light on right now. I wouldn't have that when I'm actually doing it, and uh, there we go. Yikes, finally got it, and uh, there, with commercial rolls, they put a notch on them so you can know whether you run the film through or not, which is a splendid idea which I'm also going to try. I'm going to get a 1 8 hole punch, and that will be on the end of one of the films also to facilitate loading it into the special Minox developing tank I have, which hopefully will be one of the next few videos. Bye.